What's up everybody? G5 Productions in the place to be and today's live sound tip is about building a custom drum mic for you. Welcome to G5 Studios everybody. I'm Gerald and I'm excited about this video because I'm always happy about setting up a method to streamline my workflow. If you ever set up live sound, you will know and understand that it is definitely a whole nother dynamic in comparison to setting up as a DJ. Now here at G5 Productions, we like things to be fast and furious as it relates to setups. So that way the focus is on the customer. At live sound, your customer is your band as well as your audience. You gotta be able to please both, right? So the drum microphone build today is gonna allow me to do that and what makes it awesome is I get to use it as immediate as tomorrow. So I'm pumped up about it. Let's go ahead and get into our build. Before we do though, hit that like button below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and any comments that you have or questions, just leave them in the comment section below. Let's do it. As far as cable sizes go, the first six cables you see here are 15 foot in length and the very last two are 25 foot in length. Starting with the top row of XLR cables here, they are dedicated to channels one through eight on our mixing console and it's pretty much where I keep the drums. Here is the other cables that are dedicated to channels nine through 16 on our mixing console. Those are for the rest of the band. In this column, we begin with DI boxes, dynamic microphones. We have a few Velcro straps available for whatever. And here is a row of instrument cables up to that point. And that is an extra XLR cable. All right, party people, time to get to work. There's our XLR cables all laid out looking like a music sheet and beginning from the male end working our way down to the female end of the XLR cables. We have some Velcro straps that are spaced out about one foot apart. So up to about eight feet of this harness will be consolidated and then branch off individually to each drum microphone accordingly. And that way we are able to route the cables around the drum set with ease according to where it's gonna go. So let's go ahead now and consolidate our harness. As you can see here, we have one sexy drum mic harness all set up and consolidated up until about eight feet. And then from that point, everything branches off individually. So what we're gonna do next is talk about the labeling of each end of the harness, and we're gonna assign some microphones to each cable accordingly. Here at the male end of the harness, I have everything numbered according to where it's gonna plug into on the digital stage box or the mixer. They also correlate to where on the mixer it's assigned. So channels one through eight dedicated to my drums. And anytime I have the numbers six or nine, I do write the words. That way confusion is definitely cleared up. So you don't have to guess if it's nine or six. At the female end of the harness, everything is labeled not according to number, but according to which instrument is gonna go into. That's important to me because when I store this harness without the microphones attached, I automatically know which mic goes where and how to route this around the drum kit. Before we attach any microphones to the female end of the harness, I wanted to give you a close up view of how things are labeled. So beginning with line one here, this is labeled for my kick drum mic, as it says right there, K. And line two is the snare. That's where that mic goes. Sometimes drummers do show up with an electronic pad. So line three here is the pad and T1 is for the high tom. And of course, T3 is for the floor tom. Most drummers that we encounter bring a two piece tom setup. So we have T1 and T3. And lastly, on this part, we have the hi hats. So these are lines one through six and every single one of those are 15 foot XLR cables. 
And then of course, moving over to our 25 foot XLR cables, which are lines seven and eight. This is labeled as overhead left and of course, overhead right. I've made a decision that I wanted to transport the harness with the mics attached to it. And before I get everything all rolled up for that, I want to talk about the microphones that I'll actually be using. What we have here is a CAD seven piece drum mic kit and we are going to supplement this. So going into line one, we have a kick drum mic and this is the KM212. We also have a snare drum microphone. This one is labeled the SN210. We have a three piece Tom microphone set. They are all the same model numbers, but we're only gonna use two of those. So here's the TM211 there. Most drummers that we encounter do use a high Tom and a floor Tom in their setups. But we do have two condenser microphones and these are the CM217s. Symbols don't really require no low end, so I just went on and rolled it off there. And it also allows me to roll it off up to 10 decibels right there. So symbols are pretty loud, so I went on and did that. If you're using this in a studio environment, you may actually leave it on zero, and depending on where you put your microphones, you may be okay. But on stage, we usually try to get things pretty close, and here's the second condenser mic. As you can see here, we have everything rolled up nice and neat. We still need to connect all the microphones, but I wanted to interject another pro tip here as it relates to this particular build. We do have to the right some Velcro strips, so the shorter ones will hold each individual circle together to keep everything in perspective there. And once we get all of the circles together, we'll use one of the long Velcro strips to hold that entire uh, group of circles together. The other thing I snuck into the mix is a DI box. And so starting with the bottom here, it goes up one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight, back down. We already talked about the microphones. So any drummer that shows up with an electronic pad, we got them covered. Every line with the microphones attached are rolled and secured individually with Velcros, and then all of them together are consolidated and wrapped with a long Velcro strap. So I can transport that as one big mound of wires and microphones, but when it's time to undo it, it will be easily manageable and not a problem. What I did with the overhead microphones and the hi-hat microphone was remove the mic clips. I'm gonna go ahead and attach those to the mic stand. So that's just an extra step I won't have to contend with when I get to the site to set up for live sound. At this time, let's go ahead and demonstrate the connection of the mail end to the stage box. There's the stage box that we're gonna plug the mail end of our harness we just created into. But before we do, I want you to take notice of lines seven and eight. So it starts one here through eight. Seven and eight have phantom power engaged on the stage box because on the harness, line seven and eight are connected to condenser microphones for overhead left and overhead right. Condenser microphones do require phantom power to operate. I'm not gonna even worry about which number is which. Whatever I grab, I'm just gonna plug it in. Number one, no particular order. Number four here. See, without having to think too much, I could just plug these in really quick. I don't have to be like, which line is which, get confused on the other end and then have to play cable chase. I've seen that happen a lot. Even as a DJ that happened, like which line is what, but there it is. To disconnect this is equally as simple. All I have to do is press the lock switch here for the XLR in and just pull it out. So there it is. Look at that recovery. Isn't that awesome? Awesome. 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 Here's the last Velcro strap that's dedicated to securing the rest of the consolidated harness. I am curious though, I'm, I'm just like that when I do stuff sometimes. If I just grab this and pick this up, let's see what happens. That's slick. So what I did was roll the male end of the harness onto the bottom and I'm gonna put this in the box just like that. That works out perfectly. 
There it is, ladies and gentlemen. You just saw me build a drum microphone harness using XLR cables and Velcro straps. I hope this video provides something positive and useful for you into your world of DJ or live sound. If you are looking for more pro tips in the world of live sound, then subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions or comments, definitely leave them in the comment section down below. And don't forget to turn on that notification so that you are notified as we release new content. I'm Gerald with G5 Productions, DJ Sound and Lighting, and you can always contact us at www.g5productions.com. Let's party. All right, everybody, at this time, uh, we're gonna go ahead and engage that drum mic harness that I just set up. The drum harness came in really, really handy. I was glad I built that last night.